Hola, mi gente. This is Jackie Nunez for Latin Waves. And today we have a special guest, Terry Isaiah Johnson and the lovely Teresa Trey. Now, this is Terry Johnson's opportunity and Teresa's opportunity to talk about their new stuff. Now, of course, nothing is greater than the classic that they've made, uh, Flamingos, of I Only Have Eyes for You. But later on, we'll we'll hear the newer version that Terry Johnson did, Terry Isaiah Johnson, or Terry Buzzy. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome, yes. Terry and Teresa. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm. Thank you for taking the time to be on the show. And this is, I think the last time I saw you, we were having lunch or early dinner, whatever, you're back in uh, Vegas. And... Yeah. Gotta come out again to see you guys. I miss you. Yeah, we miss Same you here. too. We miss you too. So I want to first we'll go down down the line the history of of the flamingos, of course, and then we're gonna see the other side of Terry Isaiah Johnson. I'm really excited about that. Uh, let's talk about, of course, your your first initial group where you recorded on Gotham Records in Philadelphia, The Whispers. No relation to The Whispers from the West Coast, of course, right? Tell us about the group and how you started. Well, that's when I was in my very, very youth. And uh, I had put a group together in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, we went to New York and went to a few record companies and they weren't interested in, in our songs. I'd written two, and then we had two more from the other guys. And on our way back to Baltimore, uh, we stopped in Philadelphia and went to Gotham Records. And as soon as the guy heard it, he recorded us right there on the spot. He took us right in the studio, got the musicians together, and we recorded four songs. And uh, Are You Sorry and Full Heart and Love were the two that I wrote. And we got some play out of it, uh, a lot of you know good play. And that was the beginning of that. And uh, I moved now, on from a lot, there. Of, a lot of artists always say that they miss their, you know, companies, record companies would always say, no, they didn't like the group. They didn't, they weren't interested. Did you ever hear from any of those companies after the fact that, and did they ever pursue you after the fact? No because Gotham was a much smaller label than N Records and Decca Records, right. which we joined afterwards. So how did the Flamingos form and what, what did you do? I mean, I know you wrote a few hits, so I wanna make, I, I wanna make mention of Lovers Say Goodbye and a few others that you wrote. Um, Let's talk about how the Flamingos came about. They had uh, two of the guys, Jake and Zeke Carey, from Baltimore, where I was from. We went to the same synagogue where Hebrew, uh, Masonic Hebrews, and uh, we went to the same synagogue. And they left and went to Chicago. And uh, in the synagogue there, they uh, formed together uh, Johnny Carter, and Paul Wilson, and the four of them, and then they got another lead singer, and he didn't work out, and then they got Nate Nelson, and so they had put out a few records before I even got with them, mm -hmm. and they came to Baltimore at the Royal Theater, and uh, I, I went to see the Five Keys. That that was my favorite group at that time, and uh, Five Keys were great, and then the Flamingos closed the show, and when I saw them. I saw myself on stage with them. I actually felt like I left my body. I saw me on stage playing guitar and singing with them. And after the show was over, because I knew them, I went backstage and I told them about this experience that I had. And uh, they said, it sounds weird, it sounds weird, but okay, cool. So Nate Nelson asked me if I knew of anybody because Johnny Carter and Zeke Carey were drafted in the service in the army. And uh, they said, if I knew anybody who uh, played guitar or, or piano or bass or anything, because they needed, you know, somebody to help them with their structures. And so I said, well, I play guitar, I sing lead, 
I sing uh, baritone, I sing first tenor. Uh, they said, uh, you have anything that we can hear? So I played, um, are you sorry? And when they heard it, they said, whoa, beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Uh, would you be interested in, you know, coming in and, uh, you know, bringing your guitar and audition for us? I said, not at all. So I came in the next day with my guitar, my amplifier, and they put some music in front of me. I just played it. It was a piece of cake. And they said, love you. I love you. Love you. So we'll be in touch with you. And so I waited. That was in September. I waited October and November. No call. December, wow. no call. And wow. then uh, uh, it was Christmas Eve, I got a call from Jake Carey. He was in charge of the group at that time. And he, he said, uh, you still want to be in the Flamingos? I said, you're damn right. <laughs> it took you so long. He said, well, meet me in Philadelphia tomorrow and become a permanent member of the group. And I went to Philadelphia, and then we went on to New York, and that's how that all started. I not only write song, like I produced everything, that, the four albums that we recorded. I was producer. I My arrangements, all of that stuff came from me. Uh, so I just not pat myself on the back, but it was very successful. And I don't have eyes for you. I got that in a dream. Uh, heard a beautiful it. song. Did you anticipate it be such a classic that it is? I had no idea. Nobody, nobody in the group liked it. Uh, but wow. it was my job to take them in the studio and record it. So that's what we had to do. They did not like it at all. George wow. Gold, who's the president of N Records, he didn't like it. He thought it was terrible. And uh, nobody, they didn't give it a shot. He said, but because of, of you know, spend my money and went in the studio and did it, they would put it on Flamingo Serenade album, which was our first. And right. the DJs heard it. They heard the whole album, Good Night Sweetheart, was supposed to be the release. But when the DJs heard, I don't have eyes for you, everybody chose it. And it started spreading around the country from New York all the way to California. In every state, it was just on fire. And that was wow. the beginning of our biggest song. And obviously, no one really liked it or didn't anticipate it to be the big hit that it actually became. Until today, it's still quite a hit. Yes. And you have all different uh, demographics that love that song. Yeah. And I want to play the newer version. You did it like an R&B jazzy. It's a beautiful version. So what a beautiful rendition of uh, the newer version. I noticed, Terry, that you also did a little bit of the background from the original. It's from the original, it was a little different on the background. I know there was a, a slight differentiate, how would you say, different than than the uh, the original. Who was it on on the background that, and what was exactly said on the background of the original? <laughs> right. Well, it was, it was different because the other one is Dubak Shabak, and this one right. is Dubak Shabak. You, you said, uh, what, what were they saying? Yeah, because I, I know that it was different. And then you said it on your new one, too, you, yeah, at the end yeah, there. Yeah, that dollar for every time somebody asked, we'd right, be millionaires. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can figure that out. <laughs> Who is that couple that you use? That, I mean, she had some eyes. She certainly lived up to the part, I only have eyes for you. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good film. Hi, this is Joe Photo. How are you? Matter of fact, I was just reminded uh, recently good, good, good. that she's actually she's from Ukraine. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. She just got her American citizenship. She's been over in seven years. Wow. Very That's, hard to that's get her amazing. Back. Well, I don't know about the citizens, but she got a residency. I don't know what the right. difference is. I'm sorry, but I was reminded not too long ago that, yeah, she's Ukrainian. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah. But it's a lovely video overall. I want to move on. I know that you are a writer and Terry as producer, composer, arranger, uh, and as a singer. 
I noticed you go from a baritone to a first tenor. Isn't that very difficult to achieve? No, it's very easy. I love, I love being able to switch my voice. But now talking about producer and writer, and I cannot leave out my partner here. I was going to get there. I, I do I do like that when you guys, even as the flamingos, Teresa's on stage and she's actually conducting the orchestra. Um, and you hear her voice too. That's that I, I like that. But I wish you would just turn around and sing with the rest of them. Well, I, I have a we have a song that I do when we do a ninety minute show. Um, uh, Jealous. But and I, you know, I, I I used to be on the front line full time. Um, but then we went back to the Flamingo format, uh, which was my idea uh, yep. to, to get back to you know the African American guys, strong all all lead singers. And that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Well, thank you though. I appreciate that. I know that you guys. Um, there's a picture of us there. Yeah. There you are. Yep. <laughs> the um, the the other songs you wrote, and actually, I want to mention about the other shows you do, because I know, like, when you guys do your own shows, you guys are amazing, uh, full of energy. You come up with a lot of surprises, even newer songs. This is the side I want to talk about, the newer stuff coming up. Um, Teresa, you also have been producing and writing alongside with Terry. Um, what is your take on this? How do you feel and where do you see yourself going forward? Well, we've been performing on stage together for 46 years, but we've also been writing and producing behind the scenes for 46 years. So we have a big catalog that we never had an opportunity to cultivate and push uh, things that we wanted right. to reproduce, re-record, update, change. So uh, when COVID hit, it was sort of a no brainer that, well, we're not going anywhere to perform. So let's spend, spend full, full time in the studio, which is what we've been doing for right. two years. And we're actually loving it because it's giving us an opportunity to, um, to do the newer music and to show, you know, to show that, that, you know, uh, especially for Terry, um, because he's got so many different, takes on music as like eyes and i mentioned to you behind the scenes that we we have another version uh, coming out uh, that's totally mm -hmm. different but but the point is is that he loves all styles of music he's not stuck in a decade right. he's not stuck in a style he loves today's artists we both bruno mars, bruno mars uh, you know and then and the list goes on you know mary j blige is one of my favorite African American artist out there, vocalist and rapper, and I, but so the point is, is that he gets an opportunity to also show his versatility, because so many times when you have a big hit like Eyes and you're known, lovers never say goodbye, and and you're known a, a, as a writer and producer from an era, a lot of people want to keep, keep you there, there. Right. what we call in the industry, keep you in a box. In box right. And so this has given us an opportunity to, to, for him to come out of the box and say, hey, you know, this is what I like. I hope you like it too. There's going to be some people that like it. There's going to be some people that don't like it. Um, right. But, you know, we'll, we, we carry on the flamingo sound uh, when, that, when the song calls for it. And if the song calls for something completely different, we're not afraid to do that anymore. And he's not afraid to do that anymore. And it's, it's just a, a showing of versatility. Right. Absolutely. Now, why do you think that promoters are still stuck on the past and don't allow for you guys to, to, to show the versatility that there's so much more of you than obviously I only have eyes for you. Uh, why do you suppose they keep you closed in or boxed in? Ticket sales. Ticket sales. In other words, we understand that they're appealing 
to a genre, a, a, a generation of people who grew up with that right. music. That was their music in high school or their early right. 20s. It was their life. You know, we all have songs from that time in our lives that we keep in our hearts and in our minds forever. And so they, these promoters are appealing to a certain age group and a certain genre of music. And they are of the opinion that the audience doesn't want to hear us do anything else. Right. Now that's their opinion. And in some ways it's right. And in some ways it's wrong. The audience is hungry to hear something that that artist that they respect right you know, something new, but, you know, I understand and I, I can relate to it when we went to see Prince oh, right. uh, before he passed and I, and he was, he, he was doing all this new, new music stuff. from this new album. And I was sitting there going, when am I going to hear? Let's get crazy. Da, yeah, da, right, da, da. Right. <laughs> you know, so okay. I can relate to the fact that the audience does want to hear certain songs, but I do think that the promoters, if they would allow the artists to do, uh, even if it's just one song to sort of right. say, here's another side of me or here's a different sound of me or whatever. I think the audiences would, would appreciate it. And right. we, we push that envelope. We were like salmon swimming. Up yeah. I, I, Teresa, we have spoken about this. You yes. guys already proven, proven without a shadow of a doubt of, of basically different demographics from very young to, to old. Now, let's break up that demographic. What was that demographic that you guys hit? On the YouTube channel, you mean? Yes, correct. Oh, yeah. The analytics are telling us that our top three right. demographic range from 18 to 44 years old, which was very encouraging right. because not only do we have the possibility of let's say an 18 year old, if we put something out that's, that's younger sounding and, and they, Oh, I like this song. Right. Like maybe the new one that we're doing the Latin one that, we're, that you're going to play. They like, and they go on the channel and they listen to that song and then they go, Hey, what's this over here? And they hear, I only have eyes for you and go, Whoa, it, yeah. it's sort of like comes full circle where we, we, we pull them in so they can appreciate the new stuff, but then they can also appreciate the original sound of the, the flamingos and their, they're right. classic, you know, and I, we, we don't want to erase that by any means. We want to cultivate that and, and bring in. That was always our desire to go around the world and bring in all different ages right. uh, for all the music we want to put out, as well as appreciating the flamingos music. The old oh, and, and you guys are very big out in Europe and all these other countries. This is something I've also asked of many artists. Uh, why do you suppose our music is so prevalent in other countries more so than here? Yeah. Why do you suppose that? I mean, of course, it's big here, but it's just more prevalent in other countries. Companies, the record companies, they want young talent that knows nothing at all about the business. You know what I'm trying to say? They, okay, um, yes. they like, yeah, I think it's just it's just starting to catch on where the younger artists that are being recorded now are uh, hip to. They're supposed to make money, real money. Right. You know I mean? Now, I mean, this music is big out west. I, yeah. I, I, don't, and, I think and, it's because we also. Uh, are guilty of not teaching our next generation about the music as well. It's, it, 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 I've, I've heard it said, and I don't know how true this is, but I've heard it said that the European markets seem to be a little behind, behind. our more up-to-date markets. Right. Now, right. the only way we can relate to that is when we went over there to perform, we wound up th finding out that they like the A side. Oh, but they really love the B, the B side, side. <laughs> of that of that yes. forty five. It's like what? Yeah. But this was the hit. The A side. Yeah, was the yeah. Oh, they they they're the more for for the rare and obscure, or the B side, as you say, because they're very well knowledgeable. 
They're very educated on, on our history of music and most groups that go over there have to learn all the B-sides or all the rare stuff that they sang back in the day. They have to kind of relearn it, which is pretty interesting if you think about it because they really know our music. Yeah. Right, they do. Yes. I mean, you know, they would go back and do what was the song, some of the songs we were doing like. Oh, um, uh, I remember it was um, a, a B side of Jerry Lee Lewis and, and uh, wow. Mary uh, Cross the Ferry, Cross the Mercy. Right, right. They were singing that around the piano bar. And I mean, wow. but, but, like, yeah, I mean, it was they, they really do tune into the. Sam and Dave, and all the kind of, I mean, going way right. back. Right. Man, it was old songs, but right. to them it was it. Right. It was it. And, but it was amazing, though, when we were in Japan, uh, the young wow. fans, the young guys, wow. young guys coming young. up with Flamingo Serenade, wanting him to sign albums, it and, and, and loving it. And uh, wow. the Japanese artists over there, the, the, a couple of them are, are on our, our subscribers. And you know they dress in the fifties, and they just they live the fifties music and yes. with the hair and the the clothes. Yeah, so, the same thing I saw in Spain when I went to Spain. They have like a a, a whole week of just oldies, and they get groups from here. They get groups from Germany, right, well, um, right. from right. Japan, Thailand, like from mm -hmm. all over the world. They get groups. They like you said, they dress the part. They look the part. I mean, it's amazing. And you don't have this here. I right. wish they had this here because no one does it here like they do. I mean, they really live it down to the cars, the hairdo, just just mm -hmm. everything about the music they love. And it's, it's great because they're keeping it alive. They really yeah. are keeping it right. alive. And then on the other side of the coin, just to insert this, the newer song that we're talking about that you're going to play, we released that over in Europe first and it went like gangbusters. The so 14 year old more, the, more so than, you know, the United States. That's why we, we said, okay, so we're going to debut this in the United States because, um, you know, uh, Terry didn't put out any kind of bio uh, picture, nothing. Nobody knew who it was from. He didn't use any and, accolades. And, but the beautiful thing is that, because it, no picture or nothing about me, really, just my name. And kids from India and Japan, uh, China, uh, mm -hmm. Germany, 14 years old, right. loved my stuff. I mean, I mean, and what, a million and a half? When are you going to do more? When are you going to do more? <laughs> I mean, that was, that was really encouraging, right. knowing that young people did like you right. know, what it was doing. judged by the sound of the music, not by the, the, the cover of the book. Right. Speaking of the sound of music, now I remember hearing the song, the new song that you guys just did, the Knock Knock Let Me In, which we're going to play momentarily. Um, you didn't even notice that I said to you, wow, that sounds like a reggaeton. And you're like, what reggaeton? So you actually hit it on the nose with a Latin, kind of a Latin reggaeton tropical feel to it and had no idea that that's exactly what you were aiming at or didn't even know that that was in right. existence already. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the song and how did you come up with it? Uh, just it one of my songs just came out of me and we, we put it together. She heard what I was doing. She added, I added. And uh, that is, it's that easy. I mean, it's not it's not a hard process yeah. for us. Doing what it was you a great collaboration, by the way. That was great. Thank you. Like I Thank said you. earlier, do what you feel. Do what you feel. You know, right. if it has a name or, you know, like you said, oh, that's a reggaeton. It's like, okay. You know, <laughs> well, right. it, it, sometimes you just do what you feel. And you don't I, even I'm, do still, that. I'm still oh. waiting for the, I only have eyes for you in Espanol. I'm still waiting for that. Well, I know I it'll it'll make a great salsa, yeah. by the way. Uh, I would like to do that. But but, yep. but but what style? Not not the same older style. No, no. no. I, I said a, sal a salsa. That would make a great salsa. salsa. Oh, okay. Like yeah. a full orchestration, a salsa. All right, so let me go on in the studio, Jackie. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Got to be soon because that that is definitely a hit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I want to play the knock knock, and we'll take it from there. Go ahead, Anna. That I, I still feel like dancing. I mean, that that that's such a hit to me. Uh, Anna, who's one of our youngest ones, and she said this is really she jamming with it. So. That to me is a total hit. I, I love it. Now this coming from, I only have eyes from you to this. This shows what a diversity. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, that beat is on. And you gotta do more stuff like this, Terry. This is absolutely beautiful. Well, you guys are great. Another one. We got another Coming out one. in the summertime, already, already ready to go. Party is now, party. This is hit on top of the charts in Europe, correct? Huh? This is already on the charts in Europe. Oh, well, yeah. It was four weeks straight at number one. Number one. Wow. Then it came down and went back up again to number Yeah, it actually one. came down to number three and went back up to one, which we can't figure it. That's like, <laughs> that was amazing. It, it, it What's an amazing song? The, the I like the dog thing. You thought of that, Teresa? That is pretty cool. Yeah, I give yeah. all the credit to you. He gives me the <laughs> ideas. And uh, I think I told you, I was, I was stumped for the end of that video. And I, I just kept asking him and all of a sudden the idea, bing, and I said, that's it. That was it. fantastic when I, I saw it. That was, I, that was pretty it. creative. It was very yeah. creative. I mean, uh, that 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 beat, that bass line, of course. It, it, when it dog, so dog, good, yeah. When the dog comes out and does the salsa beat. He's yeah. not, he's right on it. He's right, right on, on the beat. beat. You, you see where I'm going with this, where I want you to do I Only Have Eyes for You in a salsa version? Do you see yes. where I'm going with this? Yes. That can be done. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 think, I think so, too. I mean, I know you had another song, right, that was pretty popular in Europe as well. You yeah. want to talk about that, too? It. Yeah. We would, it was kind of like a, a Jamaican reggae yes. song. Yeah. Right. It did good too. Right. That was number one for three weeks. Wow. Wow. That was great too. Now, I know when you guys do shows, um, at least from when you do shows, other than the, you know, the flamingos in general, uh, you bring a whole lot more than just the, the hits of the flamingos. Tell us about those experiences you had uh, doing those shows. It's more fun uh, at any age. Everybody likes it. We have kids. We have older people that just love it. We like to do uh, at least a 90-minute show, and uh, we do a variety of everything you can imagine. We have a special, special song that gets us tremendous applause, and that's um, a tribute to Barry White called Ode oh, to Barry. Yeah. And that's really an uh, outstanding song. Medley, Matter of fact, nice medley. Nice medley. And it's out now. It's, it's doing really well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so basically, now that you're doing other things and have obviously more of the time to do so, is there any genre of music that you haven't done and would like to do? Hmm. Hmm. I like everything we do. No, is there a genre that we haven't done? That we haven't done? Well, that we would like to do? I, I like your idea of doing I Only Have Eyes for You salsa. I'm, oh, I'm yes, going to work I'm, on that. Start on, I'm, I'm going to start on that today with an idea of because I know I, I know that beat. Anything that can make you move is is mm -hmm. inspiring. Don't forget the timbales and the clave, because that's important. Oh, yeah, yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Love timbales. Yeah. But it's gonna. I'm telling you, it's gonna make a great hit once once you do that. I'm I'm totally I'm totally all over it. So oh, oh. now I want to go back a little again. You did write for Motown. You wrote with alongside Smokey Robinson. You wrote for the Supremes, Temptations. Tell us a, your experience as a writer for Motown, and how did that go for you? Well, I know Smokey because you know we were doing the theaters 
all over the Apollo Theater, New York, and Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, Chicago, uh, LA. And so we had worked together quite a bit. So I had uh, four songs that I had. I had another girl singer, she, her name was Terry also, so it was Terry and Terry, which is kind of dumb, but that was our name. So I let Smokey hear songs and he said, damn Buzz, that's my nickname, Buzzy. He said, damn Buzz, uh, I like it. I said, well, you think I can, you, you know, I didn't know he, I didn't even know he was vice president of Motown Records. I said, you think uh, you could, you know, talk to Barry and maybe give us a shot. He said, uh, yeah, I can definitely get you with Motown, man. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, I also have a team since Holland Dozen and Holland uh, leaving Motown said, you know, Barry wants me to put my own team together. I've got one guy, Al Cleveland. He said, and from what I just heard, you play for me. I want you on my team. Are you interested? I said, damn right. <laughs> you kidding me? So, you know, like, uh, I got there and the first song we did, we did uh, uh, a song on the Temptations, Fan the Flame. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I had a chance, you know, meeting all the, all the artists that I never had the chance to work with before. And I'm in the studio recording them all. I recorded Diana Ross and the Supremes, uh, Martha and the Vandellas, uh, Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's, uh, uh, the Four Tops, my best wow. friends. I mean, yeah, Levi had such a strong, and uh, I, I can't even think of everybody. Martha, no, um, the Marvelettes. The Marvelettes, wow. Especially, especially Smokey and, and the Miracles. The Miracles. I did a lot of songs that Smokey. Matter of fact, that was one of my biggest songs with him was uh, Baby, Baby, Don't Cry. It got me some BMI awards and uh, I just, it was, it was like seven years of my life that I spent there with him as a partner. And he was a beautiful person to work with all the time and kept me laughing. He was a funny guy, he's great sense of humor. So Motown, my days in Motown was a great memory that I'll never forget. And it was something that is in my spirit because I learned so much from Smokey and being at Motown. Now, in, in all the experiences you had with Motown and the other labels, um, is there anything you would have done differently? I didn't understand that. Is there anything you would have done differently? With the, I mean, other than the experiences you already had? Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I would have wanted to be a single artist. A single, uh, seriously, because like yeah. uh, with the flamingos, I was more of uh, I love harmonies, and when I play my guitar, I can hear all kind of things. So that's why the flamingos were different because I had a a, a, a structure from my guitar, from my spirit, from Yah that I would give to them, and it would blow their minds like, they, "Whoa, I love that! Where'd you get that from?" Got right. it from Yah, but you know, like. But when the flamingos broke up, uh, I was just a flamingo. Nobody knew my name. You know what I mean? Right. So that would have been something different that I would. Now I did record singles with the flamingos, but as the flamingos. Right, right. So that's what I would have done a little different. I would have concentrated more on me and my my style of music of what I wanted to do. Well, it's never too late, huh? I mean, you're doing it now, so I yeah. mean, you, you have quite a diverse, uh, yeah. you know, the talent is amazing that you have, and you're a great writer, composer, arranger. Uh, is you. there anyone you model after or that you, you admire? Right now, the main inspiration I have is from Bruno Mars. Wow. I love yeah, his. I, I guess he, you'll be yeah. doing another one, right? Like that. Yeah, I mean, he's so different. I mean, you know, like he's not like anybody. Matter of fact, Bruno, I know his father, Peter, and uh, from Hawaii. As a little kid, 
he was doing James Brown. He was doing all these songs, Elvis, Elvis and all that stuff. So he loves going back in the past, mm -hmm. getting that music, and then re rearranging it, but you because I can hear every song where you got it from. Yeah, <laughs> it's very retro, very retro. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, right. does, he does some Earth, Wind, and Fire. He oh, does that like, stylistics. Delphine. It, it, it kind of sounds almost identical to whatever group he's copying after, for lack of a better way of saying it. Right. I mean, some of the the chords sound identical, if you will. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I love his range. He yeah. can yes. hit those time notes. You can see the bass popping mm -hmm. out of his neck. Thing. <laughs> Vocal arrangements are so strong. His vocal arrangements are strong. Yeah, yeah. I, I really admire him mm -hmm. because he's so young, and he has an opportunity. See, he's by himself, so Bruno Mars. So you know, well, who he, he, he grew up. He grew up with the oldies. I know yeah. we don't really like to say doo up, but for lack of a better term, the early rock and roll is basically what he grew up on because his father right. was into his that. Father, music. His father was is an still is an yeah, entertainer, so entertainer, a musician. In Hawaii. And he produces uh, shows. He had one here in Vegas. So he got, you know, the talent from, first of all, yeah, then and through his mother and father. His father right. had, was, was was the one that was presenting him as the little Elvis and yeah, right. his, in his father's show. So he got exposed, and his father is in love with the oldies music. Right. So right. he got exposed he got to exposed all to of that at such an early so, age. Uh, what I like about him is, like, he can take an older song right. and rearrange it where you can hardly recognize that it was that older song. And he would put his own spin on it. And that's what I, I, I admire. Anybody with a talent like that, I admire. Right. You, you know? know, he was doing a concert in Puerto Rico. And he came out out of nowhere and he said, please say you want me to. And it's like all the people are cheering. I was like, does anyone realize that's an oldie? And he yeah, just right. brought it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's and it was it was beautiful. I mean, he he mixed it with, of course, his songs, his modern songs. Right. So yeah. I think that's something you guys should do. I mean, of course, you you've taken an old song and put your own flavor and and update it. But how about mixing it where? you know you have a whole different flavor to it like you did with the the an r b jazz version of i only have eyes for you right right, right. i i think it would be great once again i'm going to mention it it's going to be a great latin tune thank i you. told you i'd give you my word thank you i'm going to work on that yeah okay yeah and i'm i can't wait to hear that because i know it's going to be good you'll be the first to hear it you can believe that I'm going to get it first, right? Because I got to play it first on my radio yeah, show. Right, right. <laughs> and the, the, the tune that we came out with before Knock Knock it, called It's You, that was a, uh, right. an old school and a modern flavor mixed together. Right. So, right, right. Yeah. That's, that's right. I had totally forgotten about that one, and it's great. But the, the fact that you guys had, can go from one era all the way to, to now is amazing. And, you know... I hope you continue to do new things like this, kind of like what Bruno Mars does, but uh, put your own flavor to it. Now, I, I would even like to hear a bachata, so I'm going to bother you on a bachata, too. Okay. That, that's a different beat, pretty relevant to today. Thank you for that, Anna, because she's the one who told me about that. Um, if, it's, if it's one thing I can say about me is... If you suggest something to me, I'll try it. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing. I don't feel anything is too hard or too nonsensical. I wonder right. if you give me an idea, I'll start on it. I'll write it mm -hmm. because that's what I love to do. I love to be creative. Right. You know. I'll testify to that. Working with Terry in the studio, uh, I come from a totally different type of music. My my music was. Black Sabbath and Jimi Hendrix and wow. the Edgar Winters, and all, yeah. you know, all kind of, you know, that kind of stuff that was popular back then. But uh, when we're writing and producing together uh, and I said, oh, I have an idea for that part. 
He's wide open. It's never a thing right. of like, no, no, no. It's got to be all my. It's my ideas. I want to hear it. It's my music. It's my this. I, you nope. know, and we when we co-write, doesn't matter who wrote what. Doesn't right. matter how much this person wrote and how little this person wrote right. what. It's a, con, it's a con, a it's a a collaboration, mm -hmm. and we're both willing to open our minds up to say right. what you got. And usually, it, it and anybody that writes and produces songs will, will testify to this. You know, you get all fired up. Oh, I got this great idea. And then you'll be the first one to hear it and go, ew. <laughs> <laughs> no, forget it. Sorry. <laughs> it's not that good. Let's move on. Yeah. But, Has um, there been anything that you guys have done, but maybe you thought, eh, it's not that great, but when somebody else hears it, they love it. How do you how, how do you deal with that when you particularly might not be crazy about it, but somebody else is? Would you take the chance in releasing it? Would you what? Would you take the chance in releasing it if it's something that you might not think is all that great, but somebody else does? But I'm not crazy about, it, but somebody else really likes it. Yeah, will be interested in right. releasing it. Right. It all depends. It all depends. In other words, I'm not I'm not stubborn, and I'm not stupid, because other people's ears, you know, I can't I can't hear what everybody hears. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I don't think any song is really so bad where I wouldn't I wouldn't record. I, I mean, like I look at Chubby Checker and the Twist. You know, he wanted to be he wanted to be this big time singer. But he recorded, you know, the twist, and, mm. and, that's it. and that was that's him. What, that's what he was known. And he was known for it. But he wanted to be a a balladeer. He wanted to sing love songs. But right. And you know, that's an interesting question, Jackie, because we have such a big catalog of stuff that's fully produced, but yeah. never released. Right. But now it's dated, and we listen to it, and it's still good. We still like it, and say, hmm. Should we update that or just put it out like it is? Like it was. Record, really <laughs> you know, record collectors and DJs that like to play the rare and obscure stuff will see those unreleased as treasures. So right. it might right. be worth taking out. Right. Well, we just talked about a song yesterday that happened to come in the queue oh. when we were driving. and uh, Mystery. And we said, you know what? That Let's not do, redo that. Let's just release that and see what, see what happens. See if the younger people, because it is, it's, it's dance. a dance song as well. And it's got a heavy beat and all that kind of. We said, let's mm -hmm. just just release it and see it because what's old is new, right? You know. Right. And so to us, we may think, oh, it's you know, it's dated or whatever, but it but it has such a strong beat and such a good sound to it. Yeah. We we just said it yesterday. Let's let's Listen release that later on this year and just throw it out there and. I guess you should go with the principle of what happened to I Only Have Eyes for You when, you know, they didn't right. like it and look, it became such a major hit. So right. maybe you should look at it in the same aspect, right? That's interesting. That's it deep. Is. Because that, you're so right. Because like you said, um, Goldner said, well, like I, I, you spent the money in the studio, so I'm not going to throw money away. I'll just throw it on this album and that's it, you know, because right. the, right. the, the release was supposed to be um, Good Night, Sweetheart. Good Night, Sweetheart. Not the old, the other Good Night, Sweetheart. Good there. Night, Sweetheart, till we meet tomorrow. Right, right. So he just threw it on the album thinking, well, you know, we spent the money, so, you know, yeah, it's garbage. He you know, was surprised because, like, he told me, don't ever go in that studio without me again. You hear what I'm saying? I said, well, but that's my job. He said, no, unless I'm with you, you right. cannot go in that studio. Right. Wow. And then the song, when the DJs heard it, they started spinning it, and it got right. big. He called me up and said, Terry, come in here for a minute. I said, what? He said, I just want you to know that, uh, forget what I said, you have carte blanche. Anytime you want to go in the studio, right. you have my blessings. Just keep doing well, something. That, that's like because that, that song made such a big hit. Now you have carte blanche. Right. Matter of fact, right. he, he asked Terry to write a follow-up, and that's when Terry wrote Mio Amore. Amore. Right. Mio Amore, another great hit. Right, yeah, so that yeah. was the follow up uh, for yeah. Island. So that's a great idea, Jackie. I'm glad you kind Me of too. reinforced what we talked about yesterday yes. because you're right. You do not know what right. other people are going to like. Exactly. You can't please the world all the time, but you don't know until you put yeah. it out. 
I want to thank you both for being on the show. We have oh, to do this nice. again, a continuation, of course. Love you, and Jack. We, I love you guys. You both are, are very special. And I only have eyes for you. I only have eyes for you too. With that, <laughs> with that, I have to say, have a great day. Thank and this you. is Jackie Nunez for Latin Waves. <laughs>